So I open the simple BGC GUI and you'll go ahead and hit connect. And if you have a Bluetooth module, you'll want to select the Bluetooth module right here and then hit connect. So when it is connected, you'll see that everything pops up live. If I move the ghost, then you'll start seeing the movements in the software. So every ghost has customized settings. And first thing you want to do before you make any changes is save your profiles. So right here, you can, we're selected for profile one. You'll hit save. And then you can name that profile, save it to whatever folder, and go ahead and hit save. I already have these ones saved. So you'll do this for each profile. Right here you can see that there's up to five different profiles that you can save. And we've programmed three profiles right here for you. So profile one is your follow mode. Uh, profile two is your lock mode. And profile three is a mode where you can use the joystick. So save those profiles before you make any adjustments. Um, you can also see here in the service tab, this is where the mode switch corresponds with which profile. So one click, you'll use profile one, two clicks, profile two, and so on. And then four clicks we have set for calibrating the gyro, which also happens every time you start up the ghost. And then five clicks is calibrate the ACC so if you want to switch around the profile, say you only want one click, you want one click to be the joystick mode, you can select that for profile three or customize this however you would like. Um, you can also do frame upside down if you want to do an inverted mode. So let's go back to the basic tab and we'll start there. First, I'm actually going to start talking about the motor configuration. We have the pro model configured right here, which is 42 pole motors It's basically 42 magnets inside the motor and you'll want to make sure that, that those numbers correspond. You can also invert the motor. If the motor isn't properly inverted then the axis will start spinning on you and it can do some really weird things. So uh, you can invert the motor right here. You can also plug it in backwards on the actual gimbal. So if I spin it around you can see where the motors are plugged in right here and if you were to unplug it and plug the cable in backwards, that also inverts it. We make sure the motors are properly inverted before shipping out the Ghost, so you shouldn't need to mess with these. And then we have the power set for a medium-sized camera. If you're going to be using a heavier Red Epic, you're maxing out the 10 pounds, you may need to increase these power values. If you're going to be using a smaller camera like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, you may actually want to lower these values. The lower they are, the longer your battery life is going to be. But we'll keep them right in the middle and it works for pretty much the full range of cameras. Then over here to your PID controller, you can customize the response of your ghost. So let's say your pitch motor is uh, vibrating on you, then you'll want to lower this D value. I'll show you an example. So it's at 18 now, let's put it up to 60. And any time you make a change, you want to come down here and say right. So say right. If you can hear that, we're getting a vibration from the ghost. So that's because this D value is way too high. So we'll go ahead and put it back down to 18 seems to work well. We'll write that. So this value may also change if you have a really heavy camera. You'll probably want to increase the value of your P and D. If you're using a really light camera, these values will want to be a little bit lower so you don't get that vibration. Down here we have the sensor orientation already set. Uh, if you want, to, so this is calibrating the camera sensor. If you have a second sensor you can select the frame sensor and you'll the calibration is separate for both sensors so you'll hit calibrate ACC once the camera is all level and stabilized and you can also do a gyro calibrate here neither of these need to be done when you receive the ghost because we've programmed everything for you we'll move on to the advanced tab and 
Within the Advanced tab, there are a lot of different features. I'll just run over a couple of those briefly. So gyro high sensitivity will double the values of the PID in the previous menu. If you need those increased, if you're using different motors or whatever it may be, you can double those values right here. You can also select the second sensor right here. So we have frame IMU, and that is mounted below the yaw axis right now. Um, if you're connected to a joystick or remote control, you can control the expo curve right here. And you can also set the trim. You can set the trim on your remote control, but you can fine tune the trim by adjusting these values right here. RC tab, you can control the inputs for a remote control device right here, which we'll run through in a separate video. And you can also control the input for a joystick and customize it. the speed of those, the angle of those, any of the settings within the RC tab. Over in service, we already talked about. Uh, you can also see the voltage of your battery right here. And you can set the buzzer if you want a low voltage warning or any other type of alarm, you can actually set the buzzer in the controller. When we ship out the Ghost, we have the buzzer not connected at all. If you're filming on set, that's the last thing you want to hear is a beeping coming from the Ghost. So we don't have the buzzer set for anything. Follow mode tab, you can customize your follow mode. So this is one area you may want to customize. And we have the follow mode set up for a nice smooth movement right now. And the follow mode is set for the follow pitch and yaw. And the roll is disabled by having this value at 90. Um, if you want the follow mode to, to move faster, so right now you can see it's a pretty slow movement. But say that movement isn't fast enough if you're if you're filming action sports or something like that, then you can come here and where there's speed, let's say we'll bump the speed up to 50, hit right, and then now you can see the movement is a lot faster. So this may be a setting you want to customize. We'll leave it at 20, and it seems to give a nice cinematic look at, at with the values we have set right here. The deadband degrees is the amount of movement left to right and up and down where the ghost won't move. And once you pass seven degrees, then it'll start tracking your movements. So right now, if I go left and right just a little bit, it's not gonna move on me, which is nice if you're gonna be running, you won't see any of that movement, same with up and down. If you want it to be more of an instant response, then you may want to make the dead band degree zero. Or if you want less movement, then you can move it up to a higher value. I can demonstrate real quick. So we'll put this at zero. We'll write it to the ghost. So now, when I move left and right, it's moving right away following my movements. And then let's go ahead and bump the value up to 15, say right. And now you can see when I'm moving left and right, I have to move the grips a lot further before the ghost actually starts following my movements. So if you're going to be skiing or running really fast and your arms tend to move like that, you may want that value higher. And that's where you customize the setting. For my operation, I'll leave it at seven. And we'll say right. That's the general overview. You can go to monitoring. If you want to customize the PID values, this is an excellent spot to see the performance with a close-up view. And then if you want to upgrade, then we'll have firmware upgrades. You can check for the latest version and upgrade to the newest firmware within the Upgrade tab. So that's the general overview of the newest firmware and software. And if you make any changes to a profile, just make sure to save that new profile. And when you're done with everything, hit 
disconnect and unplug the USB. And now you're ready to go operate your ghost.